In today's video, we're going to be talking about gun violence restraining orders and how they've expanded in the state of California at the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021. We don't agree with them. We don't support them. We think they're a big danger to your constitutional rights, but we're here to deliver the facts so that you can learn to protect yourself. We've noticed a large percentage of our viewers have not subscribed. So if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Thanks for joining us on Shoot of the Series. My name is Ed Thorell from Firearms Education and Training. And we want to thank all of our viewers for dropping by again and giving us such great support. Um, this is also worth mentioning that this is our 100th video and we appreciate everybody who's been watching and helping us get traction to get to this milestone. Uh, but today our topic is going to be on gun violence restraining orders. And the, the real danger in them is that they deny people their Second Amendment rights without any um, conviction for a crime or being adjudicated as being, you know, having mental health issues. And you lose your due process until after your guns have been confiscated. So it's a very slippery slope when it comes to the Second Amendment, as well as the 14th Amendment, which guarantees due process. And we wanted to spend some time talking about some additions to the state of California's uh, gun violence restraining orders, because they don't really make the news, and then suddenly it becomes a surprise. So we're going to be touching on five different bills that have become laws in the state of California. And I'll be working from a clipboard just to make sure I get this right for you and uh, don't miss any of the high points. The first one to know about is Assembly Bill 164. And it's basically an extension of gun restraining orders. Um, any person subject to a valid out-of-state restraining order or injunction or a protective order has the same restrictions on buying or possessing firearms in California. And that was effective January 1. So if you have a, a gun violence restraining order from another state, California will also enforce it. So um, this is brand new. I don't know how all of this is going to work, um, but it's something that you need to be aware of. If you actually had those conditions, I don't know how you would actually go through the process of buying, but I believe that what they're trying to do is end some loopholes and fill up some gaps in the previous law. We also want to talk about Assembly Bill 339, where this also takes effect on January 1st of this year, where California law enforcement must develop, standardize, and adopt policies. Uh, for imposing uh, gun violence restraining orders based on a state standard. So according to the state, it's now going to have a universal application, meaning they'll all be basically uh, enforced the same way. It had been done county by county, and now it's going to have a statewide process to make sure that they're all implemented the same way. We also want to talk about Assembly Bill number 12. And this took place and was implemented in September of 2020, but a lot of people might not be aware of this. And what it does is it extends the duration of California's gun violence restraining order from a minimum of one year to where your guns would be held to a maximum of five years. So a meaning person could be prohibited from owning and possessing a firearm for five years at a time without ever being adjudicated as dangerously mentally ill or convicted of a crime. And that's a pretty dangerous precedent to have your rights stripped away without any due process. Now, on the same note, it's also worth talking about Assembly Bill 61, and there were a lot of provisions to Assembly Bill 61. It was a very long text. Um, this was also effective on September of, of 2020. Now, it changes on who can actually have a protective order put against you. 
prior to 2021, uh, a family member or a law enforcement officer could request a hearing. And now it's actually been expanded to include the following. It could be an employer, it could be a coworker, or it could even be a college teacher. If any of those three new categories thought that they were a threat, they could make a call and also have a gun violence restraining order set up against you. So the law is being expanded and it's a danger. Now, the last one that we're gonna talk about, which is a bit of a head scratcher, is Assembly Bill 1493. This was also effective September 1st of 2020. And this creates a voluntary gun violence restraining order. So hopefully none of our viewers fall into this category, but if you ever wanted to give up your own Second Amendment rights, the state of California has, has uh, created a way for you to do just that. You could file a form with the court that would relinquish your firearms rights and sign a petition stating that you would not contest it. And the bill would require the court to issue a gun violence restraining order against you without a hearing. Um, it's a head scratcher. I can't think of anybody that would want to give up their Second Amendment rights or sign over your due process, but this is the state of California. And, you know, except for avocados in the beach, the rest can be pretty sketchy. So we wanted to thank everybody for, for watching. These are all very complicated laws. And what we're going to be doing is in the information box down below, we're going to have links to each one of the texts so that you could do your own homework, do your own deep dive into these bills to see exactly what is covered. I'm not a lawyer. I don't play one on TV. All we're trying to do is give you the information and the basis for helping you educate yourself. So anyway, on behalf of Shoot of the Series and Firearms Education Training, we want to thank you all for joining us. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you all. Take care.